Hello everyone and welcome back for another episode of Gloomhaven Guildmaster. We're going to be carrying on with the story mission. We've unlocked the Doomstalkers one. Someone has tried to wipe out an entire settlement of Orchid. Because we've opened up South Shields, this has become available to us. So let's uh, let's take the Doomstalker and I figured the Elementalist would be a, a good fun companion. Bit of variety. In there, we've got uh, Bandit Guard Elites, we've got Vermin Shaman Elites, and Hound Elites. This is going to get us a perk for the Doomstalker, which is why it's worth us putting the time into it. Straight off with an encounter. At a fork in the road, you spot a figure up ahead, resting beside a gnarled tree trunk. They appear hunched over with one hand grasping their chest. As you tentatively get closer, they notice you and beckon you over. Hey, over here! Please, help me! There's a note of desperation in their voice, and a pained groan as the stranger waves to get your attention. However, beneath the tree's shadow, you can't quite make out who or what they might be. Could this plea for help be a trap? The surrounding bushes are a perfect place for accomplices to hide, potentially waiting to pounce and rob you. Um, you know what? Let's, um, let's help out. As you draw near, you see a rocky Savas in agony, clutching at deep cracks in its glassy chest. It certainly looks like it's seen better days. It looks up at you hopeful. I ask only for a small amount of compassion and aid. There's a temple nearby that can treat my wounds, but I haven't enough gold for treatment. If you can spare some gold, I'll reward you with what I can. Oh, I don't like spending gold. I really don't, but this wasn't an ambush, so let's put the money into it. You hand the Sabbath the gold, who grimaces as it rises to its feet. Thanking you for your charity, it holds up a small pulsating crystal, bathing you in a green light. You feel a rush of energy as you bask in its glow. The Sabbath bids you farewell, and you wish it a speedy recovery before you head in opposite directions down the path. So, ten gold. And we start with fire infused, which is, and ice infused, and air infused, and earth infused. And we start with everything infused, and we've been strengthened for the first round. Not necessarily awesome, but for 10 gold, that's not terrible. During your journey, the Doomstalker explains how he and these other orchid had crossed the Misty Sea to live in the lands around Demon's Gate. He along with those that now work the land in the small settlement you are travelling to, reject the orchid way of seeking enlightenment through meditation, instead seeking a deeper illumination through hard labour in an unforgiving land. When you arrive, the famous forges, fires and blacksmiths of South Shield feel much further away than they actually are, among the simple orchid huts and farmland. Meeting the hardy stairs of other villagers, as you follow the Doomstalker, you can see a rugged, practical resolve in their eyes. He leads you into the Chief Orchid's hut, who proceeds to describe the attack to you. A few days ago, a small human force charged the settlement unprovoked, but were clearly unprepared for the Orchids to be as strong as they were, even without their appointed Doomstalker there to protect them. You are about to ask what these humans look like when an arrow sprouts from the wall beside the Chief's head. She needs only point at the bandits closing in on the shack's door to show you the perpetrators. Right, so... We need to wipe them all out. What are our options? Reveal a room tile by getting the elementalist to open it. That seems reasonable. As for the Doomstalker, we've tried doing the workhorse before. It is tricky. It's not impossible, but it is tricky. Masochist is probably as difficult, if not more so. So let's... Uh, Let's go with Workhorse. They really came back again. So soon, someone must be paying them well. I recognize their sigil, they're mercenaries. Take them out. One of them must have something on them that points to their employer. Well, with so many in the room, this does actually bode well for us being strengthened on the initial attack. So let's have a look at stuff we can do that is multi-attack. Over on our wonderful 
elementalist. We can do ice spikes on these three, burn the flame. Uh, it's range three, one, two, three. Yeah, we can we can get away with hitting them from there. So ice spikes, and I'd like something that could also do another attack. So we could do frigid torrent, but then we're likely to just actually get attacked. So maybe, maybe we'll do infernal vortex so we move quickly and ice spikes for the actual hit. If only we had a really large multi-attack. This would get up to 3-3 three, three with pushes, two targets, which is a lot. But it's not the most. We could get it up to f 4, but still only two targets. Okay, let's have a quick check for what the most targets we can hit is. Three targets down there, two on the top, three targets here. Two targets there. Many targets here, but it's not going to be much damage. I think this is the uh, the right call. We'll go for the uh, for the wound and the spread. On this side, again, we're going to look for multi-target things, uh, but we can also do like the uh, the detonation explosion to help things along a little bit. Like, if we were to get detonation on the back... I really would want Frightening Curse, but Frightening Curse isn't going to move fast enough in this situation. Right, multi-attacks, let's look. Uh, nothing there. We've got two there, but that burns the card. Rain of Arrows is not a bad call while we're strengthened. Relentless Offensive is another two, potentially. I think maybe Swift Trickery and Detonation and we'll try and just do like a, a chunk of damage to them. Like maybe we uh, we hit this guy, then with the wound he gets exploded, spreads it amongst the others. It's not a bad call. So swift trickery is range four, which is plenty to get in there. We could come over this side and just minimise the chance of the uh, the hound making it in. One, two, three, yeah. Let's do that. Okay. So the plan is get a bomb here, try and detonate it, do some other shenanigans uh, around with wounds. Well, the hound's moving far enough that it's not really going to matter. So let's get the bomb in. This is a big one. It can potentially hit three of the, uh, the enemy mobs if we get lucky with the kill. Which we didn't, yeah. but we're going to do enough with the next attack. And this will hopefully kill all of them, actually. Not quite, but we've got the wound on at the very top, which is sufficient for what we need. We could step in and do... Yeah, you're actually going to make it in no matter what, aren't you? If we step to here, it's going to limit who can come in. Slightly, but not, not really. I don't think we really want to move. Uh, it's also not really worth us running the Infernos at the moment. 
So, skip the movement, stay where we are. Okay, that was lucky. That was planned. And that was lucky. Right. Dealing with these guys. We can do stoking hail to stun one of them. Do we have something that's going to do an attack on the base? I don't think so. Not nicely is the short of it. So let's do encompassing shadow and we'll try and get the disadvantage and like move around a little bit. Planning for next turn. We c uh, yeah, the, these are all going to have waned by then. So unless we go for formless power just to try and one, two, uh, two attack, three attack, four attack, like try and nuke that guy. I don't think it's really worth it. We can get a frightening curse out and race for the grave. Rain of Arrows and Race for the Grave. Let's uh, let's start Rain of Arrows off. I think that's a smart plan. So, Race to the Grave, we're going to put it on the wolf. It will die in two turns, so it will get to attack us this turn, and then next turn it will die before it does that. So, that's fine. Getting attacked at advantage is going to be painful, but... This is why we have the Shadow Armor. And over here... Let's get the stun on the big guy at the back. Pretty good, actually. We could have done it on the one in front and it would have killed him. Uh, as for where we're moving, let's come around this side. I hope they attack us, but they're probably going to attack our friend. Ow. Need to get that poison cleared off. Right. You will die on your turn. And we're down to pretty basic smackaroos. Let's say Frigid Torrent and something to move us in a little bit closer. One, two, three, four. Yeah, we can move up to the door with Crystallizing Blast. On this side, something that attacks at point blank range would be good. We don't have anything specific, but we could always just do a regular swing at them. So let's say multi-pronged assault and a moment's peace will move in and get rid of the poison. I quite like that. So let's move around, get the poison sorted. And we'll try and kill this guy. Didn't quite manage it. But when this thing dies, we'll shoot him. Even with a minus one, that's enough to kill him. So, moving in, and we're going to get that uh, frigid torrent attack. Cool. That went well. We're going to get a reasonable amount of uh, gold out of this one. We don't have any loot abilities, so yeah, let's uh, let's move slowly. Fresh kill, vital charge, and we'll just start gathering things up. Now, 
thing I forgot to do at the start of this was to look at what it entails, but it's a relatively small map. We're almost half done with all the enemies anyway, so it's not really going to be that much of an issue. Ooh, do we want a battle boar? You know what? Yeah. Let's let's get a battle boar now. It's too experience. And we do need to be thinking about how we can get maximum experience out. Let's get Frightening Curse on right now and Crippling Noose will let us just move and grab the next thing. So there's the Frightening Curse. And I think it's time for our first long rest on the Elementalist. Over here we don't quite need a long rest, but it's probably smart that we do one. We're not going to get the Shadow Armor back, which is a bit of a shame, but uh, we will get some healing. Right, what are we happy to lose? None of them, really. They're, they're all lovely in their own way. Okay, let's let's say detonation. We've done detonation already, and it was it was good. And over here, I think we'll lose probably raw enhancement okay let's uh, step into the next room and see what there is we're not really going to be able to do a doom this turn but if we do a moment's peace to move in and relentless offensive to attack On this side, I like something that's going to give us a bit of fire, so Stoking Hail. That's going to allow us to do Ice Spikes on the following turn. And maybe Crystallizing Blast at range for the actual attack. Let's open the door, see what there is. Okay. We could do a little, uh, little plink plink. He's got a big ass shield, so that's not going to be very helpful for us, but we'll try anyway. Not the best roll that we're going to have, that's for certain. Now, if we put on the Cloak of Invisibility, Bandit Archer's not going to be able to do anything because it's not going to be able to reach us. The Hound's not going to be able to do anything because it's not good. Well, it might run in and muddle us. Uh, and the elite guard isn't going to be able to do anything, so this is a great time for us to be invisible. Okay, he came in to attack the boar, which did very little. Good job, boar. Good job. Right. This is range five. We can't move in because of our boar, unfortunately, but we can do some pulling to get this guy closer. You're not visible, unfortunately. Big hit. Big hit. Pull you the, to there. And skip the pull on you. 
As for this, we'll just have to... In fact, you know what? We'll, we'll come across this way slightly. Ooh, we could go... No, we can't really go round because that's not walkable. Just come to here then. Now, the fun stuff happens. So we're going to go with our wonderful ice spikes. It's going to hit both of these. We could step away in order to do that. Or we stay where we are. We take the slight disadvantage. And we go for extra big batter boom on him. Although encompassing shadow is actually a good option. Let them have a disadvantage against us. On this side, uh, we want to be pushing the workhorse as much as possible. So we want to doom on this guy. Race to the grave works. Swift trickery will get a decent attack on him and get the get the doom damage happening as well. Good job, Battle Boar. Right, you suffer damage. Big hit. That'll do. Elementalist. Get the wound going over here. The wound helps. But ultimately it's not quite what we needed. What are we going to do next turn? Let's have a, a think. We could potentially make some cold and do a shaping the ether stun. Because this isn't going to last because it's already waning. Cannot move. Luckily, he's taken the hit. We can't actually hit anyone with this attack, which is a bit of a shame. So we'll transfer the curse across. I was hoping we'd be in a position to be able to see. Right, multi pronged assault. We need to move in quick. Solid bow. Actually, quite like this as a plan. In fact, rather than multi pronged. Let's go for fresh kill because we can get more experience with that at the moment. Over this side, I said we were going to go with shaping the ether, so let's go infernal vortex and shaping the ether. Try and move quick. Get a stun on the hound. Dings a little, but it's not too bad. If I leave that space open, oh, you're going to move way past it anyway. So, yeah, let's actually just step in like this. So we're going to jump all the way past to up here. And we're going to get a hit on you. Gives us a little bit more experience. Move quickly, try and move forwards. We'll do what we can over this side. Battle ball kills it off. 
Let's shoot this guy. And the curse can't transfer anywhere because there is no one nearby. Right, well. This then becomes a question of... Do we want to grab these? I think probably the elementalist will grab them. Uh, or do we want to move in? And if the elementalist is grabbing them, we can just move in up this side. Yeah, step into there. Grab the gold. 18 gold so far. Uh, long rest for the Elementalist. And long rest for our lovely Doomstalker. We will lose Solid Bow at the moment. Because we want to be maximising our experience for that workhorse. And over this side, I think we'll lose Crystallising Blast. That trap is, is going to be a real pain. Here's an idea. We step in one, we make you invisible. So Infernal Vortex lets us move in. Encompassing Shadow allows us to make our friend invisible. Over this side, we need to move into the room. Swift Trickery, Multi-Pronged Assault. That's going to give us two more experience and get us a decent attack off. We don't really want to go far into the room. Ooh, jeez. They brought Wild Vermlings with them. Who takes Wild Vermlings anywhere? Someone wanting to destroy a farm. Kill them quickly, they'll make short work of the orchids, crops, and livestock otherwise. So, attack four. I think what we'll do is we'll hit both of these. We'll race to the grave, you, and then like transfer it, and we'll do something with the hound later. But we want to be standing in this. in this doorway. Big hit. Less big hit, but both effective. Right. You're going invisible. And then we're stepping in just a teeny bit. And I'm going to make some fire for next turn. Nice to see the Shaman being super effective. Okay, I did say race to the grave on these guys. We're going to start with this one here. And we can, we can make a trap here. With crippling noose. And that's going to let us drag someone onto it with our hooked chain. I think we'll push straight past the trap and just try and not care about it. One, two, three, four. He's at range four. We could hit it with formless power. Potentially just move in a little bit and get hit by the trap. Do we have a jump move? No, we don't. So in order to get round, we'd have to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Fine, we'll just we'll tank it on the chin, which we can totally do. 
because we've got plenty of health. Let's say lava eruption and... I suppose it's good for the wound. It's really good for the wound, but we'll go with formless power. Battleball steps in a little. Okay, race to the grave. We're going to start it on you. We're going to get that stun trap in place. So this thing has to move three. One, two, three. It's not going to get cl anywhere close. And then next turn we'll be able to drag it across both of those. Formless power will give you a bit of a tickle. Oh my word, what a hit. I guess we won't be dragging him onto the trap then. Uh, take the damage. Skip the rest of the movement. Right, seeing as you've died... We could, we could hook the chain, pull him onto the trap we just made. And then pull him this way. Get the extra experience straight away. Oh, that feels good. So we've completed workhorse. That is, that is making me really happy. Uh, we have lots of gold to get in here trying to keep this guy alive so we can grab the gold seems like a smart plan at this point a moment's peace will let us loot one so if we move to here one two three we can loot four different patches So fresh kill and moments piece gets us in there to do that. Uh, I need you to move two, maybe three at the most. Ideally two and moving before the boar. And from here, one, two, three, four. No, it's going to be out of range. Let's do the ice spikes attack. He's going to do some disarming. That's not really much of a problem. Especially because we're going to be looting. So step on in. That gives us a little bit. And we'll hit you for what it's worth. Wasn't worth enough. Get in the middle. Get the looting going. 30 gold we're up to. Still two bits of gold in here. So we'll grab them first. Uh, this is going to be a short rest over this side. We can lose a moment's peace now. If we race to the grave and he'll die this turn. Or he'll die next turn if we move really slowly. So let's say... Tough choice. Tough choice. Let's not race to the grave from this turn. Let's uh, say swift trickery and fresh kill. We know we can kill him anytime we want. I mean, we could try and fresh kill him. Cool. Simplifies it. We're going to get the two, uh, two bits of gold here. We're going to miss out on one bit. I'm happy with that for us not uh, accidentally losing. Yep. 
There we go, 34 gold and a smooth sailing whole bunch of XP. Uh, as the last attacker falls, you're able to fully take in the destruction before you. It seems some of the raiders slip through the fight. Props and livestock alike lay dismembered. 15 ability XP for the Doomstalker and then 3 more for the workhorse. That's, that's going to put them up a level. And of course we have the perk. The blood trail led to the merchant's caravan on its way back to Demon's Gate. That caravan often supplies meat to a butcher's shop in the Crooked Bazaar. An awfully long way to carry raw meat for a shop, isn't it? I don't think they've stolen all his livestock just to sell spoiled meat. Even somewhere like the Crooked Bazaar. You don't think the butcher's shop is a real store, do you? Uh, fronts are one of my favourite crimes to uh, bust, of course. Well, they would be one of your favourites, wouldn't they? Uh, what's that meant to mean? Four XP away from levelling up. That uh, did a hell of a lot to bring the Demon Stalker up close in line with the others. So, uh, what do we want to do? I think I'm going to add... I'm going to add Blind. Stun is a hugely important ability. Negative scenario effects, we haven't really seen many of them in Guildmaster yet, so I'm going to wait a bit to get that in. But getting blind is, is going to be pretty handy. As for the uh, for the rest of the stuff, I think that's... Uh, let's, uh, let's check see the other characters. Level 3, level 2, level... Yeah. So we've got, we've got a mix. Now, as soon as we start bringing anyone in who is level 3, our average level, rounding down, will uh, will be level 2. Uh, specifically, the party level up here, you take uh, the average of uh, the character's levels, divided by 2, uh, and then that is the party level for the sake of adventuring. Higher party level means we start getting more money. We've got 100 gold at the moment, which means we can start, in theory, affording some more uh, upgrades and enchantments or enhancements depending on uh, which version of the rules you read. I think it's worth us holding off just for a little bit and really starting doing it when people hit level 3. So we'll do another mission with the Elementalist and Doomstalker next time, get them both leveled up and that will leave us with the Quartermaster, the Spellweaver, the Berserker, the Tinkerer and the Summoner and the Wine Thief. Uh, still to do. Some of them are already quite far along, but not all of them. Let's have a quick check over the trainer. I really want to get that disarm ready so we can start purchasing it. I'm glad we started consuming light and dark elements because unlocking the Sunkeeper... Uh, in fact, do we get the Sunkeeper for consuming that or is it just for blessing yeah infusing light 30 times will give us the sun keeper they are another very fun character and likewise there is the uh, the counterpart for dark right uh that is going to be it for this episode thank you very much for coming along everyone i do hope you have enjoyed this as always, if you have, be sure to give a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do so, and you'll be told when the next episode goes live. Otherwise, I'll see you next time for another episode of Gloomhaven Guildmaster. See you soon.